hello everyone welcome to the third lecture of this series of uh, foundation analysis and design so uh, let's start our uh, session so in our previous lectures we have seen how to size the foundation how to apply the loads and how to uh, you can say check the base pressure and settlement so one thing i think uh, mistakenly i have said wrong uh, we all of you have seen in our previous sessions that we have applied the surface loads that is nothing but our uh, overburden load right here you can see the overburden load uh, let me let me show the value also so uh, overburden load of uh, is it visible here let me check yeah 20 kilo newton per meter square uh, we have applied how we have calculated i think 1.5 we, we have considered the height multiplied by the density gamma h we have considered right so how much is, is it coming is it 20 so let me see 1.5 18 27 okay uh, we have we have uh, you can say deducted the depth of the foundation from uh, from the total depth right like suppose this is my foundation and this is my ground level so this will be my soil filling right so we have deducted the you can say depth of foundation and then we have calculated the uh, the total weight of this soil that is coming on the on the top of the foundation right and we have applied the load on it so when we are applying the load on it and then we are checking the base pressure so we are basically considering the gross pressure on the soil right not the net pressure so we are not excluding this we are including this uh, soil load and then we are checking the uh, base pressure so when so when we'll be checking for the gross pressure so in that case we will not check directly for the sbc which is the safe bearing capacity but also like this is the net sbc when i'm saying uh, sbc so this is actually net sbc without the soil load on it okay so basically when we have applied the soil load on the top of the foundation so obviously we'll be checking the pressure then this pressure then for the gross sbc so then we will check for the gross sbc so how we can calculate the gross sbc i think a bit hint i have given in our uh, previous sessions so it is nothing but the sbc that means the net sbc so i will just write it in the bracket net sbc this is what is given in our uh, used to be given in our uh, soil report plus the gamma into h so what is this gamma this gamma is nothing but the density of soil density of soil above right or whatever soil you have excavated and this is nothing but the height this is the height means nothing but the height of the soil right so uh, what was the thickness we have considered for this footing so we have considered the thickness of 400 mm right so if you see if i draw the foundation here we have the founding level at 1.5 meter from the ground level okay so this is 1.5 this thickness we know this is nothing but 400 mm so 0 0.4 meter 1.5 meter so this is 1.1 meter then okay so we know the height which is equal to 1.1 meter gamma uh, it may vary but um, usually we consider 18 kilonewton per meter cube okay so our sbc we have considered uh, 300 kilonewton per meter square right 300 kilonewton per meter square plus gamma h so here 18 multiplied by 1.1 the same value that means 20 kilonewton most probably it will be coming okay so let me just take again 18 multiplied by 1.1 yes it is coming 19.8 so we have taken 20 okay so it will be equal to 20 so i will add it and now it will be 320 
kilo newton per meter square so this when you are adding the overburden load or you can say the soil load on the top of the foundation and then you are checking the pressure so now this will be your allowable pressure so this is my allowable pressure okay or you can say the gross uh, uh, bearing pressure okay so i think we have done the sizing uh, uh, of the footing based on the net sbc not the gross sbc so i think in that case the size of footing will be reduced reduced so let us check uh, it is already unlocked uh, we had to increase the size up to uh, 250 mm now let us shrink it again uh, shrink it back to 3 meter by 3 meter define sorry edit edit areas and expand areas and i'll be shrinking it uh, by if it is 125 okay 125 so minus 0 0.125 okay okay i think doesn't work let me check again edit areas expand expand shrink okay it is in mm let me just undo it yes it is in mm only i have given it in point so edit edit areas expand shrink so it will be minus 125 okay you can see now it has shrinked and now we will be checking it for 320 kilo newton per meter square pressure this is my allowable remember okay so now i think it will pass let us check i will just run the analysis from here okay the analysis is done let me go to this show reaction soil pressure i'll take this serviceability load combination apply now you can see it is coming 302 so before also we are, we were getting 302 but as we are uh, checking or uh, considering 300 kilonewton per meter square as our uh, you can say allowable pressure mistakenly so that's why we have increased the size so basically as we have added the overburden load or you can say the soil load on top of the foundation so in that case we have to add the gamma h with the uh, say bearing capacity right so now the say bearing uh, the bearing capacity is 320 kN per meter square and now here we are getting only 300 and 302 so that means this is passing under this uh, I can say a load combination uh, sorry uh, passing under the pressure okay so we will go with 3 meter by 3 meter you may you may again further reduce it and check and uh, you can say optimize it more but uh, I, I will proceed with this just to show you okay so uh, let me just delete this I think I have to unlock the model and delete it okay so let me redraw the dimension lines okay fine so three meter by three meters as my foundation size that we have finalized now we have to design the foundation okay so there are one more case uh, that we need to check that is for uplift that i will show you later okay now i will go with the pressure only later we will uh, i will show you how we can check for the uplift also in case you have water table suppose this is your foundation right and your water table is somewhere here this is your ground level so this is your water table right so for this height of water you will have buoyancy force on the foundation and the foundation will try to go up right so how much it is going up okay uh, that that will uh, like we need to find what is the percentage of uh, uplifted area right in in small isolated footings or in general cases we do not allow uplift but in major structures and uh, you can say uh, combined footings or you can say raft we used to apply a percentage of uplift in the foundation also 
even in case of major structures we do allow the uplift uh, a percentage of uplift in isolated footings also okay so that i will show you later uh, let us discuss the basics first so now what you have to do we have to run the design and analysis so i'll just click on this second option which is run analysis and design we have already defined the uh, load combination if you see one point dead load plus one point live load in our previous session right so i will run the analysis and i will suggest all of you to correct your sizing as per the base pressure concept that i have uh, you can say explained today right so now uh, the base pressure we have got and we have got the sizing so the first design check that we will uh, we, we will begin with is the uh, finalizing of the thickness right so the finalize the thickness finalization depends on two things as i said first one is two way shear first one is two way shear second one is one way shear right two way shear and one way shear so as uh, uh you can say we are not providing any we we have already discussed that we are not going to provide any stirrup in the foundation or in any vertical reinforcement in the foundation so in that case the the shear need to be taken by the concrete itself right so the concept is vu is equal to vc plus vs this is the basic concept of shear design as we know as per is456 but here we are avoiding this vs that means the shear capacity of steel we will not consider only the shear capacity of the concrete will be considered so whatever analysis shear you are getting it should be less than the shear capacity of the concrete that means the concrete itself will be able to take the shear and there is no there will be no requirement of shear reinforcement okay so two-way shear as i've explained that means the punching shear the software itself is capable of calculating the punching shear right so the punching shear we check at, at d by 2 distance from the face of the suppose this is my a column from the face of the column we used to check at a d by 2 distance now uh, as we have already defined the load size in our previous session as you have seen so the software will be able to calculate the punching uh, you can say two-way shear or the punching shear so if you go to display and if you click on this show punching shear design you can see the punching shear is uh, visible here and it is showing 2.3935 okay so just let me right click on this and you can see this is my punching perimeter the punching area and for this dead load and live load uh, we are getting an utilization ratio which is 2.3935 that means whatever uh, you can say vu we have got the analysis uh, shear we have got and if you divide it by the capacity okay so then the ratio is 2.3935 what does this mean this means this capacity is very less than the vu that's why we are getting this kind of uh, result right so in that case you need to increase this in order to get it one or less than one as we have explained right this is my utilization ratio that means demand per capacity ratio so what i have to do i have to increase the thickness in that case so we have considered 400 mm thickness and we are getting 200 uh, 2.3 so obviously uh, we have to go for a higher depth so i will unlock this i'll go to define slab properties and here that's why i have uh, uh, you know say given a very small thickness even for a high load so that you can see uh, what is the result we are getting so here we have 400 let me go, go to 600 directly and uh, we will check 600 and click on ok and click on ok i'll run and design again sorry run analysis run and design i'll go to display show punching shear design now it is 1.19 so 600 mm is also not enough right so i'll unlock this again i'll go to define slab properties modify and from 600 i will go to maybe 700 mm i'll click on ok i'll run the analysis and design 
let us see the punching shear display show punching shear and now it is 0 0.9 it is very at the margin right so what you can do you may not be at the very uh, i can say uh, at this particular margin you may be 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 is a good area where you can uh, go right it is very very much optimized it is not required actually okay but because in some cases in the accidental cases you may have a higher demand so in that case this kind of margin should not be there actually right so i'll just unlock this and i would have done uh, uh, i would have done it at the very first iteration itself but i am just showing you how you can make the iterations so 800 mm you may increase or 850 right just for your as we have taken a very random load so i'm just going with the thickness of 850 maybe i have taken a very higher load here but it's okay uh, i'll click on okay 850 okay i'll save it and i'll run the analysis and design but now as we have increased the thickness of the you can say footing obviously the pressure above will also change so we will check the pressure first soil pressure apply and now the soil pressure is around 300 but what you have to do we have to decrease the pressure that we have applied so you can see let, let me check whether the, it is uh, passing under punching then we will change the other parameters okay now it is very uh, you can say optimized uh, sorry uh, very much you can say high so the ratio now it is going to 0 0.6 so i'll just last uh, you can understand that 850 mm is not required so what i will do i'll go to define slab properties and finally i will i have decided to go with uh, maybe 750 or 800 mm okay so just to show you i'll just go with 800 mm click on ok now i will change the pressure also uh, so now this thickness is 0 0.8 meter okay and uh, this one now it will be how much the total was 1.5 meter and 0.8 meter we are deducting so it will be 1.5 minus 0 0.8 it will be 0. 7 right so 0 0.7 multiplied by gamma which is 18 so it will be 12.6 so you can say 13 kilonewton per meter square we need to apply as the surface load so i'll select it again i'll go to assign load data surface loads i'll select q which is our for our overward and or you can say the soil load and i'll click on replace so i'll click on 13 i'll write 13 kilometer of meter square click on ok so you can see the load we have changed and now it is 13 kilometer per meter square so one thing uh, i have not uh, shown you that see this area when we have applied the load now now the load is applied in this particular area also that means it has included this area also in the uh, application of load so as we have column here as you can see as we have column here so the filling will not come here right filling will be here only so the filling will not come here so what you can do uh, you can apply a negative value of or you can the opposite uh, the same uh, you can say load in the opposite direction so that it gets uh, you can say deducted so what you can do you can just select this null area okay uh, let me select the null area here right like this and i'll go to assign same load data and surface loads under q same surface load but in the opposite direction that means upward direction so minus 13 kilometer per meter square i'll click on add or replace whatever it is because there is no other load on this null area so i'll click on ok okay so now if i go on the top of this uh, foundation i can say column area you can see the load on this on the top is zero kilometer per meter square right and this area we are having 13 kilometer per meter square. that means automatically 
the soil load from this area got deducted from this area it got deducted okay so this is the way these things we can do uh, so now we have decided the thickness for two way shear okay so we have to again run the analysis and we need to check for the one way shear also so now you can see if i go to display show punching shear design now it is 0. Uh, 0.722 okay 